Paper Jewels, Postcards from the Raj, is the story of postcards in India. In many ways, postcards were the Instagram of their time, a way of sharing images with personalized messages socially. It was the first mass transmission of images. And it is my belief as an author that there are many secrets contained within these transmissions, many different ways of looking at history and many different stories, many of which I try to bring up in the course of this book. The book is divided into chapters that focus on the main geographical areas, Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Jaipur, Lahore, Karachi, all the different big cities and areas in the Raj. There are chapters on Sri Lanka where some of the most beautiful postcards were actually made because it was such a key shipping transit point and postal rates were very low there and you had some very fine artists. And there are also chapters on Northwest Frontier Province and the border with Afghanistan, where actually postcards were used as part of a continuous battle that was going on there. And in each of these areas, I choose the most interesting photographer, printer, publisher, artist of postcards and tell their story, as well as the story of the place through postcards in India. Paper Jewels is a visual archaeology of the Raj. There are over 500 postcards in this book, and each one of these postcards is to me an artifact full of ambiguity, full of layers of meaning that need to be decoded, full of messages that need to be interpreted, full of intentions and perspectives that have meaning in them. A postcard is a message not only sent from one person to another person at a certain time in history. It's also something that is sent to us in the future. It's a permanent record that we can use to look back and understand people in their times, in their context, more clearly and more distinctly. The first postcards of India were probably published by Werner Rössler, a German or Austrian photographer based in Calcutta. He had studios on Creek Road and Meadow Lane, two commercial hubs in the city. He moved to the postcard business as a way of expanding his commercial enterprise. Werner Rösser was a very good photographer, but his first postcards were actually lithographs. They were printed in Austria, which is where the postcard was actually invented in 1869. And in the mid-1890s was a place where there were a lot of small lithographic presses where people started producing postcards for the very first time. The advertising industry had a lot to do with the origin of these cards and Ressler being a German or Austrian based in Kolkata used this tradition to have these cards made in Austria. They were expensive to make. They cost like one anna each at that time, which was actually a lot of money. You had stone blocks, maybe six to 12, depending on the number of colors, each of which had an impression of the image. And then a piece of paper was run through the press multiple times. Very soon after the first lithographic postcards were produced, there was demand that was far bigger and greater than that slow and cumbersome and very expensive process could support. So you had the color type developed. The color type was a postcard struck through a glass plate straight from a photograph. You had very dense areas and you could depict things as they actually were in great detail, but you had no color. They were much cheaper to produce, however, and very quickly Ressler switched from lithographs to color types and produced a number of color types based on his photographs. This is the story of Paul Gerhardt and the Ravi Varma Press. Ravi Varma was India's greatest 19th century painter. His expertise was on taking Hindu mythological scenes and giving them a touch of realism and elements that made them seem very familiar and realistic to audiences then and now. In the early 1890s, Ravi Varma decided that he wanted everybody to see his images. So in 1892, he invested the then enormous sum of 80,000 rupees 
in buying a lithographic press from Germany, one of the very first printing presses in India, bringing it over to Mumbai and setting it up there to make reproductions of his paintings that he could then sell all over the country. As part of that purchase, he brought over a master printer and a master lithographer who was Paul Gerhardt. Paul Gerhardt was one of the most interesting characters in early postcard publishing in India. He was a painter who was known for paintings of nudes and backdrops to operas and landscape scenes. And he also was one of the very earliest people to experiment with producing postcards in India. In January 1899, Paul Gerhardt went to Ravi Varma and his brother Raja Raja Varma and we know this from the brother's diary, and asked them if they would be interested in having 100,000 postcards manufactured at the press for 1,000 rupees on consignment for the dealer and photographer in the city called Babaji Sakaram. This was the first time in India that postcards were going to be printed by an Indian-based painter, in this case, Paul Gerhardt, struck from watercolors of Mumbai, of its people, of its buildings, and of its scenery. Over 40 Indian scenes were painted and then produced as postcards by Paul Gerhardt. Gerhardt's postcards focused on some of the new construction and buildings that had just come up in the city. One of the reasons Ravi Varma is so popular even today as an artist is because he invested in a press that made lithographic reproductions of his paintings, which were turned into postcards and became very popular in this way as well. And in the next few decades spread all over India and took his mythological scenes and made them the standard way of looking at Hindu mythology throughout the country. My favorite postcard artist and really the first Indian postcard artist is M. V. Dharandar. Dharandar was a Maharashtran who as a very young kid was recognized as being an exceptional artist. And he was taken on by the JJ School of Art as a young man. His father died in his first year at school, but still the various British administrators took him under their wing and paid for his fees and so forth. And he spent his entire career at the school. He became such a talented painter, designer, artisan, craftsman. You name it, he could do it. In fact, in the 1930s, he became head of the JJ School of Art. The great thing about Dharandar, and the reason I like him the most, was because he represented all the new kinds of people who had sprung up in this urban environment. And he showed them with a sensitivity and an insight that I think make him a very, very unique artist. Mm -hmm.